Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to continue our study of electric potential, and we're gonna be looking at how to calculate the potential due to a continuous charge distribution. So this is gonna be kind of similar to when we did this for an electric field, but one thing that's gonna help us is that potential is a scalar. So that means that the potential at one point in space is due to the sum of the potentials due to individual charges. And if we can take extended objects and break it up into pieces, then we can use an integral to calculate the potential. Now, be very clear on this slide that this dV is a small amount of electric potential, not volume. Okay, so this is our equation that V is basically K integral of dQ over R. So if we can find some way to write dQ in terms of a spatial variable, just like with an electric field, then we should be able to integrate and calculate the electric potential. And remember that we have a way to check our work because the electric field is negative dV dr. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to calculate the electric potential for a couple of different geometries, and then we're going to check our work using E equals negative dV dr. Okay, so here's the first example. We want the electric potential at a point P located on the perpendicular axis of a uniformly charged ring of radius r in total charge Q. So we did this for the electric field and we had to take vectors into account. But the great thing about doing potential is that we don't have to. We just have to say that V is the integral of dV, which is the integral of K dQ over R. Okay, so what I do is I think of a tiny element here which is going to contribute a little bit to the potential dV, and that's because it has a charge of dQ. And I'm not drawing any vectors at point P because there is no vector to draw. It's a scalar. So it's actually pretty simple. Now there's a couple ways to set this up. One way is if it's uniformly charged, then we know we have lambda which is our linear charge density, and lambda is the total charge over the total length, but the total length happens to be 2 pi r in this case. And we could also say that there's a tiny piece of this ds, and it would have charge dq in a piece ds. So take your pick of which one of these you want to do. And then we could say that ds as before is equal to r d theta. So that means that dq is equal to lambda ds, which is lambda r d theta. Okay, now it's very important to recognize that this capital R is not the same thing as little r. Little r is going to be this distance right here. But little r isn't changing. It's actually a constant. So if I have big R right here, and if we call this distance x, we can write that little r is the square root of big R squared plus x squared. Now we're ready to perform our integral, and it turns out to be very simple. So v is k times the integral of dq over r, and dq we said is equal to lambda big R, d theta, and so now we have our spatial variable. We have theta, which is going from zero to two pi. And then we have little r, which is the square root of big R squared plus x squared. Now if you look carefully at this, you'll notice that theta doesn't appear anywhere and r and x are constant. So everything comes out and we get k lambda r over the square root of r squared plus x squared times integral from 0 to 2 pi, whoops, integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta, 
and guess what the integral of d theta is? It's just the angle, so it's just 2 pi. Okay, so our final answer here, well, almost final, is going to be k lambda r times 2 pi over the square root of r squared plus x squared. Now there's one more thing that we can keep in mind here, which is that if we go back to our definition of the charge density, it's the total charge over the total circumference. So that means that Q is equal to lambda times 2 pi r, which is exactly what we have here. So our final answer for electric potential is KQ over square root of r squared plus x squared. Okay, now how do we know if this is right? So that's our answer. How do we know if this is right? Our check is to use E equals negative dv dr. Okay, in this case it would actually be dv dx. Okay, as we move closer and further from the ring, dx will be the variable that's changing. Okay, and the electric field, as we said before, is going to be pointing this way, point P. Okay, so we do this, and it's convenient to write V as KQ times R squared plus X squared to the minus one half, and then when we take negative DV DX, we're going to get E is equal to negative negative, negative one half, right? So those will cancel. KQ, R squared plus X squared to the minus three halves times two X. And if you go back and you look at the value for um, the electric field, it's KQX over R squared plus X squared to the three halves. And so what we've shown here is that the electric field does check out and it comes from this expression for electric potential. So we've checked this example. Okay, now you also could have just taken this first part here, the integral of k to q, and realized that as you go around the ring, nothing's changing. So we didn't really need to do all of this mess. We could have just written that v is equal to kq over little r, and then we substitute in little r is square root of big R squared plus x squared to get back to here. So either way you solve it, it works out pretty nicely. Okay, so next example, we want to find the electric potential along the perpendicular central axis of a uniformly charged disk of radius r and surface charge density sigma. Now sigma surface density is total charge over total area, which is pi big R squared in this case. And that's also equal to dq dA. Now in this case, one ring is going to be our dq, okay? And again, we'll pick a point here and we'll have a horizontal distance x, and then we'll have r, and then little r as before. Oh, sorry. Sorry, we're gonna be integrating outwards. So the radius of our ring is gonna be little r, and then the hypotenuse will be square root of little r squared plus x squared, okay? so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write uh, basically the potential for a ring is k dq over the square root of little r squared plus x squared. And this is our expression from the previous slide, previous example. And what we've done is we've replaced big Q with dq, the charge of a ring, and we've replaced big R with little r, the radius of one ring. And we can sum all these up, and we can say that, so this would actually be dv, okay? So that means that v is the integral of all of these dvs, 
going from r equals 0 to r, little r equals big R. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to big R of k dq, whoops, let's fix that, over square root of r squared plus x squared. Okay, now how do we get dq? Well, dq is going to be sigma dA. And if a is pi r squared, dA for a ring is going to be 2 pi r dr. And just to say where we got that from one more time, a, the area of a ring would be pi r squared, so dA is 2 pi r dr. So that's how we got the dq is sigma 2 pi r dr. We're going to plug that in there and we're going to get the integral from 0 to big R of uh, 2 pi r sigma dr over square root of r squared plus x squared. Before we integrate, we're just going to clean that up a little bit to take, uh, oops, I, for, I left out my k. Sorry about that. We want to take out a couple things to make this uh, integration a little bit easier. We're going to take out the k, the pi, and the sigma and integrate from 0 to r of 2r over the square root of r squared plus x squared dr. Now the reason we're going to do that is we're going to make a u substitution. So let's have u being equal to r squared plus x squared. Oh, my stylus is really messing up today. So that means that du is equal to 2r dr, and that's plus. And that's why we left it like this, so that we can turn this into k pi sigma times integral of u over u to the one half. Oh, sorry, du. Not my best game today. Okay, so that's u to the one half. And then our limits, if we look at this, is going to be big R squared plus X squared, and then just simply X squared. And you've seen this before, this type of substitution when we did the electric field. So this is nothing new. And I'm trying to leave some space here so that we can see the uh, electric field check that we did last time. So that's going to be equal to k pi sigma and the integral of u to the negative one half is going to be u to the positive one half all divided by one half which we're immediately just going to write as a 2 right there that's evaluate, evaluated from x squared to big R squared plus x squared and so that's going to give us 2 sigma k pi times the quantity big R squared plus x squared square root minus x. So it was x squared, but it was to the one half power and we're subtracting it, okay? And this is our expression for the electric potential. Okay, now one thing that you'll notice about this particular expression is that the electric potential is not zero when x is zero, okay? When we did the electric field, we had a, another term here in x times this that made everything go away. Okay, now, speaking of electric field, let's do that calculation, and E is equal to negative dv dx again. So that's going to be negative two sigma k pi, and that's going to be that's going to be one half times r squared plus x squared to the negative one half times two x minus one. And if you think about our expression for the electric field that we had last time, this is pretty much exactly it. We simplify this a little bit and it's going to turn into two sigma k pi times one minus x over 
the square root of r squared plus x squared. And that checks out to what we had last time for the electric field, oops, that's a K, the electric field of a uniformly charged disk, okay? So that's pretty cool, the fact that we can use electric field calculations to check our electric potential calculation. Okay, so next time we're gonna do one more example of this, and then we're also going to start talking about capacitors.